different Chicago television stations, someone using sophisticated equipment managed to briefly and illegally override broadcast signals on WGN-TV and WTTW. Jack Connerty reports now that both incidents are under investigation. <laughs> Even in a medium that is no stranger to bizarre moments, these were truly bizarre. Starting first on WGN-TV at 9.14 Sunday night during a sportscast. 12 quarters finally did. Take some pretty sophisticated uh, microwave equipment operating in the broadcast uh, auxiliary frequency bands and, uh, and a significant amount of power. About two hours later, the video pirate struck again. This time, the target was a science fiction broadcast on PBS affiliate WTTW. And this time, it wasn't 25 seconds long. It ran for almost a minute and a half. By this time, the pirate had managed to insert audio as well, along with a display of a marital aid and a portion of his or her anatomy. It generated hundreds of calls. Really kind of expressing uh, sympathy over the fact uh, that uh, our signal would be interfered with this, in this way and that it would inconvenience so many thousands of our viewers. The incidents are now under investigation by the FCC and the FBI. But the odds, I'd say, if a guy continues to involve himself, either sporadically or continuously, uh, it's very great that we will determine who it is. All early evidence points to someone with a broadcasting background. Someone who really knows the business and uh, microwave in general. But the person in the Max Headroom disguise may not know how sophisticated officials can be in tracing this sort of thing. It leaves an electronic signature. And while it may have been a stunt, it is not treated as a joke. Chicago's video pirate could face a jail sentence and fines for his freelance exercise in public access. Jack Connerty, Fox 32 News. Jury deliberations in tonight is trying to find out who's responsible for two acts of video piracy. Last night, someone broke into regular programming here on Channel 9 and on Chicago's public broadcasting station. As Larry Roderick reports, the first interruption took place during last night's 9 o'clock news. McMahon Sports anchor Dan Rowan had just started his Sunday night Bears report when the screen suddenly went black, then came back on with a new unruly presence, a man wearing a Max Headroom mask. We had been taken over by a video pirate for a short time, until technicians here changed microwave channels between the studio and the transmitter and knocked him off the air. And apparently somebody uh, with some microwave equipment was able to interfere with our signal going to the uh, Hancock transmitter. Now this is not just anybody off the street, he has to have an electronic expertise of some level, right? Yes, he does. It takes very sophisticated equipment to, uh, to do this at a significant power level. So this isn't uh, something that just anyone would be able to, uh, to accomplish. But Channel 9 wasn't alone in its Max Headroom appearance. There was even a longer episode on Channel 11, public broadcasting. Any way to learn? I'll get you a hot drink, miss. A little after 11 p.m., Doctor Who was knocked out by the Max lookalike, who pitched a soft drink, then performed a series of antics that station officials found less than humorous before the pirate himself pulled the plug. Fortunately, it was a self-destruct mechanism. It was beyond our control. Uh, we now have already implemented steps whereby we could take something like that off the air immediately if it were to occur again. Uh, it did, of its own volition, go off the air, as I say, after about a minute and a half. It annoyed some viewers. No, I just thought it would be just a slight mess up, but that in the middle of the tape, it's going to be... We're going to have to tape over it. Angered others. Uh, somebody wants to get attention, what do they do? They go break into a, uh, uh, a television broadcast. Just to get attention, like throwing a brick through your window, so to speak. Okay. It's, not too sp it's not too bright, really. Well, some thought it was a lot of fun. So what did you think about the whole thing? Very, very funny. <laughs> it may seem rather humorous, but there is more to it than that. For when this person is caught, he or she will face both civil and criminal penalties. It is very serious, and uh, we'd like to uh, inform anybody who's involved in this type of thing that it is serious and that we will take every step uh, that uh, we can to uh, find out who is doing it. And once we have uh, determined that, we will 
make sure that uh, the full extent of the law is uh, carried out. Meanwhile, Channel 9 engineers say they have taken steps to prevent further appearances of the Mach Max. This is Larry Roderick, WGN News. Well, the FCC says last night's piracy was the first of its kind in Chicago. Another one is on tonight, this one for the video pirates who managed to scramble Chicago airwaves. The pirates interrupted WGN and WTTW programming with a show of their own. Our Mike Kirsch has more. Channel 11's Doctor Who was unexpectedly knocked off the TV screen last night by a broadcast pirate disguised as Max Headroom. The wacky and at times perverse TV surprise came shortly after 11 o'clock, lasting about a minute and a half. The same thing happened at WGN's 9 o'clock news broadcast earlier in the evening. Someone wants to get into your house, uh, they can find a way to do that. And I guess likewise, if someone wants to interfere with your signal, they can find a way to do that. The FCC says the pirates were able to use stronger microwave signals to override the television signals which are transmitted from the Hancock and Sears towers. I'd like to inform anybody involved in this kind of thing that uh, there's a maximum penalty of $100,000, uh, one year in jail or both. The broadcast pirate who broke into HBO programming about a year and a half ago and threatened HBO with this message was caught by the FCC and fined $5,000 and was put on one-year probation. The FCC says the wise guys who pulled off this latest stunt are in very big trouble. Mike Kirsch, The 10 O'Clock News. The FCC says or warns that should the pirate... Video pirate who raided two television broadcasts last night first hit WGN. Its signal was jammed during the news in the middle of the Bears highlights. The pirate mimicked the Max Headroom character that you see on TV. Take some pretty significant uh, equipment, technical equipment, and some knowledge of uh, broadcast uh, frequencies, uh, microwave frequencies, and a lot of, uh, a lot of power. Less than two hours later, Channel 11's broadcast of Doctor Who was disrupted. The 90-second interruption ended with the video pirate's bare bottom being spanked with a fly swatter. But his punishment will be far worse if he is caught. The maximum penalty is one year in jail and a fine. It says $100. I think it is a higher fine.